hatchlings, it's Dragonfeather, and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, I'm going to share with you guys the basics of Draconic Wicca. Not Wicca, and not the Draconic Path, but the combination of the two of them. And I have my notes here with me so I don't miss anything, and this is just going to be a very general overview of Draconic Wicca, just the basics that you need to know if you're interested in this path, and some first steps that you, may want, that you might want to take if you want to follow this path. First, before we get into anything else, I'm going to give you a really basic definition that I wrote for Draconic Wicca, just because I couldn't really find a good one online. So here we go. Draconic Wicca is a nature-based spiritual practice that consists of Wicca and the Draconic Path. This is a popular combination for certain practitioners of Wicca. Both principles from the Draconic Path and Wicca are incorporated into this practice. Each personal practice will vary from practitioner to practitioner. Not every single Draconic Wiccan is going to follow what I'm going to share with you guys in this video. Just like any other practice, any other spirituality, not everyone's going to be the same even if they use the same label. Just wanted to clarify that. Traditionally, in Wicca, practitioners believed in the goddess and the god. Not all practitioners in the Draconic Path work with gods and goddesses. However, it isn't uncommon for practitioners of Draconic Wicca to work with dragon gods, goddesses, and deities. So before we get into just a few dragon gods and goddesses that I wanted to share with you guys, it's pretty common for Draconic Wiccans to work with dragon gods and goddesses instead of the actual like god and goddess or like triple goddess and horned god, if that makes more sense. I personally work with both. Like I said, I don't really identify as a Draconic Wiccan anymore, though I do have a lot of Wiccan-based practices in my craft and in my personal practice. I do identify as a Draconic Witch, um, but more so as a practitioner of the Draconic Path rather than a Draconic Wiccan. It's like a very blurry line, you know, it's a spectrum. It ain't just black and white, and some practitioners are gonna be completely different, although some would say my practice is pretty much Draconic Wiccan. Some common dragon gods and goddesses are, and forgive me if I butcher these guys' names because dragons have complicated names, and we're continuing. So the first one is Ganecht, god, ruler of the night, opportunities, and a guide. Then there's Morzadan, goddess of bountiful harvests, mother aspect of dragonkind, protective and nurturing. Then there's Solange, god of healing, cares for those who care for others, must plant at least three fruit trees to work with him. And then there's Oida, a goddess of guidance, help, and helps make difficult decisions. These aren't all the dragon gods and goddesses that exist by any means. These are just a few common ones that I personally resonate with a little bit more so than like the dragon god of war. I'm not about to invoke that guy in my house, you know what I mean? But like these are more of the um, lighter aspects of gods and goddesses that are dragons as well. And I figured I would share those with you guys. Traditionally, in Wicca, practitioners would invoke the power of the elements of earth, air, fire, and water within their practice. However, many practitioners of Draconic Wicca will call upon elemental dragon guardians instead. So when we have rituals, like, okay, for example, a Wiccan ritual, you would call upon earth, air, fire, and water. Maybe light a candle for all of them to have all the elements present in your space. However, in the Draconic Path, usually you would invoke the power of the dragon guardians, the elemental dragon guardians. And in Draconic Wicca, most practitioners will do the same. Most practitioners will call upon the elemental dragon guardians rather than just the elements themselves because the elemental dragon guardians are the elements personified themselves. So that's why some practitioners will choose to do that. I would say most choose to do it that way, but you never know, you never know. So the earth dragon guardian's name is Grail. The water dragon guardian is Nalian. The fire dragon guardian is Fafnir and the air dragon guardian is Ceres. Moving on, Draconic Wiccans cast spells, perform rituals, or do crafting with the help of their dragon guardians, especially Monte. Monte is, every, everybody has Monte. Everybody has a personal dragon guardian that they can reach out to if they choose to work with that being. Um, now these particular beings have known you for lifetimes and their energies are very much entwined with yours. More often than not, when spell casting, in ritual, in any sort of magical work or crafting, the practitioner will call upon their dragon guardians as many as they want or maybe just one or two or a few and will ask of them to give them their magic like they'll ask the dragons to give them their magic and assist them with their magic so their craft and their spells can be even more like have an extra boost you know what i mean dragon magic conquers all guys it's just that way 
Meeting Monte is the first step if you want to try and practice Draconic Wicca. Now, Monte, like I said, is your personal dragon guardian, and probably the best way to get in touch with this particular entity or being, whatever you want to refer to them as, is going to be through meditation, automatic writing, maybe some sort of divination, and uh, I think I said, oh, and dream work. That's a great way to meet your dragon guardian as well. Those are the four, like, those are my four top ways to, like, meet Monte and to, like, work with, honestly, any like spiritual entity, any mythical creature, any god or goddess, like anything like that. Like those are gonna be like your top four best ways to contact them. And it's kind of up to you to pick which one works best for you. Cause like I said, everyone's different and everybody's craft is gonna be different. So it's all about what finding works with what's best for you. Many draconic Wiccans still celebrate the Sabbaths and Espits, but might choose to work with dragon deities rather than the traditional gods and goddesses. For example, let's say on Ostara, a draconic Wiccan, instead of worshipping or working with, say, Oestra, I think that's how you pronounce the, the goddess who started o Ostara, <laughs> but instead of working with her, maybe a practitioner of draconic Wicca would choose to work with um, Solange instead, which is the dragon god of healing, cares for those who cares for others, and you must plant three fruit trees to work with him. Maybe for your Ostara ritual you can plant fruit trees to honor your dragon your dragon deities, essentially, instead of doing it the more like traditional way. That's kind of like the draconic twist on like a Sabbath, for example. And for an Espit, instead of like calling on maybe um, Selene, I think, is the goddess, the moon, a moon goddess, and like Aphrodite, or any of those like lunar goddesses. Maybe instead they would work with Morzadan, which is a mother goddess of healing, like the mother aspect of the mother aspect of dragon kind, and she's very nurturing and very loving. And for me, anyway, I relate the moon. I relate the moon with the feminine. So I would work with a dragon goddess, preferably. Although it's totally up to the practitioner what they want to do, how they want to practice, and even some practitioners of Draconic Wicca will work with gods and goddesses as well. But just remember, if you're gonna do that and have them in the same circle at the same time, or in your same ritual space, that the dragon is always held in the highest regard. They are considered above gods and goddesses, like Hecate or Poseidon or Hades. Like, they're considered above that. So just so you know, um, if you're gonna go ahead and work with both at the same time. Conic Wiccans may choose to follow both the Wiccan Read and the Draconic Ethics or Ring Code. I'm referring to the Ring Code from Mystical Dragon Magic by DJ Conway. Um, not every Draconic practitioner follows that, both of Draconic Wicca or the Draconic Path. It really just depends. The Wiccan Read, there's a shortened version and there's a really long version, and not every Wiccan follows the Wiccan Read. Just like not every Draconic Wiccan's gonna follow the the Wiccan Read, but some may choose to do so. I personally love the Wiccan Read and it's a very big part of my practice and my craft, so I do follow it, but I don't consider myself Wiccan if that. I know, so confusing, aren't you so confused with labels? Labels are so confusing. <laughs> let me stop, let me stop, but seriously, like, it just depends on the practitioner. Draconic ethics are pretty strict. Uh, working with dragons, they're pretty strict. <laughs> some are more strict than others, some are more lenient than others, just like humans. But for the most part, if you don't follow their ethics, which I have made a video on dragon ethics, I'll go ahead and link that in the description box if you're interested. But um, if you don't follow those, usually dragons don't wanna work with you. Like they just wanna make sure you're on the same wavelength as them. And respect is so important in, that, in this practice with dragons. Like, respecting your elders is huge and one of the draconic ethics so it's very good to keep that in mind so if you're interested in practicing draconic wicca i'll go ahead and leave the draconic ethics video for you if you are interested a lot of people probably the most commonly asked question of this whole shenanigans is what's the purpose of draconic wicca like seriously What's it about? I want to know. I'm going to tell you just a little bit of overview. And like I said, again, it's going to be different for every practitioner why they choose to walk this path. But for the most part, this is why. The purpose is to connect with nature and natural cycles. Natural cycles being seasons, lunar cycles, and the natural order of time. Like getting up with the sun and going to bed with the sun, if that makes sense. The next one is becoming our greatest inversion, our inversion? Becoming our greatest versions by embracing our darkness. Embracing your darkness is a really big thing in the draconic path as it is a left-handed path. I wouldn't say draconic Wicca is a left-handed path. It's kind of like a balance between left and right-handed because Wicca is definitely right-handed path. 
instead of working with love and light all the time, to turn around and face your darkness head on and to embrace it head on and like don't hide from it, don't shy from it. Like there's nothing wrong with your darkness. Everybody has it. Everybody needs it to be balanced and to exist in this world. And so that's a huge part of this. And by learning how to embrace our darkness, by learning how to look at the things that make us afraid or things that may have hurt us or traumatized us or insecurities we, we may have and like by thinking about it and breaking it down and um, setting ourselves on fire with our guardians to burn away what no longer serves us is a huge part of this practice. Next one, and probably last one I'm just gonna share in this video, is developing connections with dragon kind. Now this is the biggest reason why I practice draconic, the draconic path, and it's the same for draconic wiccans too. You want to develop these relationships with these, with these beings, with these mythical creatures, because there's nothing like them on earth. Like, they, they are across all cultures, throughout history, they are very much a part of the human experience, and that's why I feel like many practitioners choose to work with this because nothing kind of beats a dragon, especially in my opinion. I know not everyone would agree with me, but come on guys, I'm dragon feather and I gotta like, gotta root for my dragon homies, you feel me? Now that I gave you some basics, I also asked in the hatchling clan if any of you guys had questions about draconic wicca and like any sort of thing relating to that, so I'm gonna go ahead and answer the top voted questions now and then we'll be on out of here. Hey, so this is Dragonfeather, interrupting your regularly scheduled content for today because you should join the Hatchling Clan. Why? So you can be part of the Q&As at the end of the videos in the future. And this is a great way for me to connect with you and see what you want to know exactly. And the Hatchling Clan is just a really awesome place to connect with other magical beings on this earth and to become a Hatchling because everybody is pretty much geeky, cheeky, and freaky over there. So. Come join the Hatchling Clan to discover the magic within. Ooh. Join the Hatchling Clan, you know you want to. Okay, so the first question we have is from Noctis, and they ask, what will help you earn the trust of a dragon? Also, will the elemental dragon guardians, as well as our Monte, be understanding if we don't cock if we don't contact them every single day? This is a very good question because I personally struggle to connect with my dragon guardians daily. It's not something that you just like do super easily. I mean, yeah, in theory, you just gotta meditate for 10 minutes, but sometimes that doesn't work for everybody. And as long as you're open and you're honest with yourself and with your guardians about where you are in your life and about how much you want to work with them instead of shying away or avoiding it or coming up with excuses to not work with them, then they'll be understanding. The thing that the thing that's the difference here is like if you're like, you know, go out of your way to avoid practicing because you're afraid or something like that. Trust me, I've been there. But like those types of things, they're not really gonna they're not really gonna put up with that shit. <laughs> but like if, say you have a really busy schedule and like you're trying to like work to pay your bills and maybe you have kids and maybe, you know, you have school, whatever it may be, just as long as you like keep them in your consciousness and maybe even like think about them during the day and talk, and talk to them in your head during the day, it doesn't have to be all fancy by your draconic altar, you feel me? but like usually they will be understanding and just let them know that you care, you know what I mean? Let them know that you want to work with them and like, hey, I know I had a shitty day today, maybe I don't have time to work with you guys, but know that I want to, I love you and I'm here for you. And that's kind of where, that's kind of how I feel about that. So our next question is from Ilithari and she asks, what books would you recommend to read about Draconic Wicca or online sources? Unfortunately, I don't know any books that are just Draconic Wicca specifically. So that's kind of why I took my books from Wicca and my books from the Draconic Path and mooshed them together. And that's kind of what worked for me. I am personally really interested in writing a book on Draconic Wicca. Leave a like on the video if you would love to buy that. Like if you would buy a book that I write on Draconic Wicca, would that, would that please you in life? Would that make you happy? For the Draconic Path and more information on dragons, I recommend Dancing with Dragons and Mystical Dragon Magic by DJ Conway. These are some of my best and most favorite books that I have on the Draconic Path. I follow these pretty much the most. These are the books that talk about the inner rings 
Um, I am a draconic, print it, a draconic apprentice in the inner rings and each book is a little different. Um, this one goes more into the inner rings and this one's more like just a basic introduction of how to work with dragons. So these ones are a little bit like lighter, like <laughs> not dark, like they're not like super dark magic, but it's like these ones are like more, I would say, Wicca friendly. And any, any like Wiccan books that you have, like Scott Cunningham is a good author. I think that um, Thea Saban, Wicca for Beginners by Thea Saban is a really good book. I, I'm too lazy to go get them. But another book that I got from one of you guys actually is this book here. This is the Draconic, the Draconian Ritual book. This is definitely Draconic Path, like specifically. However, it's kind of like weird the way it's written. And like every time I read a chapter, I'm like all heated, like questioning myself and life. And it talks about like sac does it talk about sacrificial magic? It talks about blood magic and sex magic, and that's kind of more of the darker topics, but it's really good to know about that stuff too. Like I said, this path is about embracing your dark side so you can be more balanced, and that's pretty much what this book goes more into and how to like have rituals and stuff. Like it's literally a ritual book, but as you guys can tell, even from the cover, it looks kind of like dark, so it's, it's not like my favorite, I would say, but it has a lot of information in here that like is really good to know when you're starting out this path because maybe you don't really want to like follow every single thing of the draconic path, but it's okay to pick and choose what resonates with you and what doesn't. That's the beautiful of life. You have a choice, man, to do whatever the fuck you want to do. But yeah, other than that, there's really no like Draconic Wiccan specific books that I know of. And I wish there were, I wish I had one, and that's why I'm kind of thinking about writing one. So leave a like if you would actually buy that. I, I would buy that. I would really buy that. That's why I want to write it because there's none that exist. So the next question we have is, are there any similarities between Draconic Wicca and other forms of the craft, such as Fairy Wicca? Um, that's a good question. I would say probably not. <laughs> Draconic Wicca is very much like its own thing and like working with dragons, like I would say it's similar to the Draconic Path more so than anything else. However, when it comes to like Fairy Wicca, like you mentioned, I would say that, I mean, you're working with a mythical creature in both of them, but that's like the only similarity I could really say. I mean, some of the offerings would be the same. Like I know uh, dragons really enjoy cannabis as an offering and fairies do too. It really just depends on what type of division of wicca you're talking about but for the most part draconic wicca is kind of its own little bubble over here and not many people like to be in this bubble and those who do are pretty fucking rad in my book the next question is from kimmy chi and they ask is draconic wicca and the draconic path the same thing like two different names for one thing also, do you have to follow Wiccan rules while practicing Draconic Wicca slash the Draconic Path? I'm interested in the practice, but don't really want to follow the same rules as Wicca since Wicca never suited well for me. Well, if Wicca never really suited well for you, then Draconic Wicca is probably not for you. The Dr Draconic Wicca and the Draconic Path are very different. They do have similarities, this is true, but they are very different in the fact that Draconic Wicca takes a lot of principles from Wicca and infuses it with a lot of principles from the Draconic Path, where the Draconic Path is a left-handed path that not many walk upon for its dark nature. And for a lot of people think that dragons are the devil, so that's kind of bullshit. But I would say that if you want to work with dragons, but you don't want to work with Wicca, then the Draconic Path is going to be better for you because Draconic Wicca is like a combina- it's like a hybrid of Wicca and the Draconic Path, where the Draconic Path is just dragons and just all that jazz and nothing about Wicca unless you want to, like me. Like me, I, I follow the Wiccan read and I have like Wiccan principles and I still celebrate Sabbaths and Espits, but I don't identify as a Wiccan and I don't identify as a Draconic Wiccan, but a practitioner of the Draconic Path. I hope that wasn't confusing, but I hope that answers your question. From Exoripa? I can't pronounce your last name, love. I adore you and your videos are amazing, but I can't pronounce your last name. She asks, what are all the best personal ways to communicate with the dragon? If you don't speak to them for a while, do they just go poof, gone, or do they take in consideration your situation? This is kind of similar to a question I answered previously, but it's a little bit different. I would say the best way to communicate with your dragon guardian is meditation, automatic writing, like dreaming, and divination. Those were going to be probably your best ways to connect with them. In my personal practice and in my personal experience, I can't speak for everybody. Like I said earlier, 
If you mean to communicate with them and you're open, you're honest about wanting to do that, they will be understanding and they don't just go poof, they're gone. However, if you take a break from working with them and you go to work with them again, they might not respond to you right away, but they're definitely watching you. And it's something that, it's something to keep in mind about dragons is that they're very silent listeners. They like to watch and observe and make their moves accordingly when they feel it would be best. And sometimes, they are strict and are kind of intimidating, I'll give you that much, but for the most part, they're, in my experience, they're understanding. But sometimes after like a hiatus, if you choose to take one from this path, it might take a little extra effort to get them to work with you again. Next question is, Lunar Leah asked, is there a draconic pantheon? I would say kind of, sort of, yeah. I wouldn't say like, well known. I mean, I would say the dragon gods and goddesses that I mentioned earlier are definitely a part of the draconic pantheon, as well as the elemental guardians, Grail, Nalian, Fafnir, and Ceres. I think they all work into that in the dragon realm. However, I don't have like, this is the main goddess and this is the main god and like this is what they do and all of that like i don't know enough and i feel like most people don't know enough and pretty much everyone who works with dragons is always a beginner it's just kind of how they want to keep it you know dragons are like that so to answer your question i am not sure but maybe in the future if i find more information i can make a video on it our next question is from svita Vasman? Uh, I'll put your name on the screen, but they asked, I've been looking forward to more videos about Draconic Wicca. What makes this path different than normal Wicca? Well, aside from the obvious focus on dragons. Also, recently I met my spirit guide who turned out to be a dragon, which I wasn't expecting at all. I am not a follower of the Draconic Path, so I have been wondering, will it be rude if I call him Monte? Is it even an appropriate title for him, seeing as he is not guiding me on, dr not guiding me on Draconic Wicca? So to address your first part, the thing that makes Draconic Wicca different from normal Wicca, besides the main focus on dragons, is the fact that you're gonna want to work with your dark side too. That's really not something that is in any tradition of Wicca, I want to say. Like, sure, maybe some Wiccans do shadow work, but like legit shit shadow work. Like, oh my gosh, like let's talk about that one time someone abused you and let's rip it out and put you on the path to healing. That's pretty much how they do it. And in order to get you to change, sometimes they rip whatever's holding you back right out of you. No, no tenderness, no kindness, no gentleness. It's like ripping a band-aid off quite often and it sucks sometimes. So that's very different from any tradition of Wicca. To answer your second half uh, for your spirit guide, I would say that it's okay to call them Monte if they're your dragon guardian. It doesn't mean that they have to guide you or whatever on the path of Draconic Wicca. Anyone can work with the dragon outside of the Draconic Path, outside of Draconic Wicca. Literally, literally, you can do whatever you want. Like, it's, it's just like if you're gonna work with dragons, like, take into consideration their, their ethics and their code of conduct before you just go willy-nilly working with them. I recommend watching the Draconic Ethics video. And if you do meet these beings, talk to them and ask them like, how, how can I work with you? How can I help you? How can you help me? Like, how can we make this a mutual benefiting relationship? So yeah, that's pretty much it for this Draconic Wiccan video. It ended up being a lot longer than I thought, but this is just the basics of Draconic Wicca. And if you guys like this video, please let me know in the comment section below and let me know what you guys would like to see in the future. And if you like this, this uh, like Q&A at the end type thing. It's kind of something new that I wanted to try using the Hatchling Clan just to get your guys' feedback and see exactly what you guys want to know so I can help you as best I can. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for choosing to spend some of your day with me and my dragon friends today. You're welcome in this, this dragon den of mine always. I am very grateful for you choosing to click on this video. Now, as this video comes to an end, I wanted to wish you well on your way today and hope that you have nothing but a magical enchanting whatever day, night, or evening you are having. And I hope that you decide to come back in my next video. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure to do so because I post new videos every week. Woo! Other than that, stay geeky cheeky and freaky. Little hatchlings, blessed be, and bye. Different when we're both made